Okay, we're ready to go. All right, thank you. My name is Kenneth Hitch, and I'm with the National CSP team. And I appreciate this opportunity to speak to you all day about the Conservation Stewardship Program and the 2014 Farm Bill. Let's see if I can advance slides. There we go. The con see, Conservation Stewardship Program is a voluntary program that is open to all agricultural producers across the United States. The purpose of CSP is to encourage producers to address priority resource concerns while those, cons while those producers improve and conserve the quality and condition of the natural resources in a comprehensive manner. This is accomplished by undertaking additional conservation activities and improving, maintaining, and managing existing conservation activities on their operation. Now, financial assistance through CSP includes payments for the existing conservation activities, as well as additional activities that the producer adopts in order to meet and exceed the stewardship threshold for selected priority resource concerns. Eligible lands for CSP include private and tribal lands that are cropland, pasture land, rangeland, non-industrial private forest lands, and other lands in ag areas such as farmsteads and associated ag lands that are related to agricultural production. Got to get the right arrow here. The 2014 Farm Bill authorizes NRCS to enroll up to 10 million acres into CSP each year. Now, CSP no longer requires that non-industrial private forest land acre allocations be maintained separately from ag land allocations. However, applications for non-industrial private forest lands will continue to be evaluated separately from other ag lands and other ag uses. Participants may enroll land in CSP even if it's already enrolled in certain agricultural conservation easement programs, including the Agricultural Land Easement, Farm and Ranch Lands Protection Program easements, and existing Grassland Reserve Program easements. Land enrolled in the Conservation Reserve Program, CRP, is eligible if the CRP contract expires at the end of the fiscal year in which the land is to be enrolled in CSP, and there is an approved conservation plan on the transitioning land prior to approving the CSP contract. I don't see a graphic on that slide that should be there. Um, so a lot of people want to know what to expect when they apply for CSP. So I wanted to go over that a little bit with you. During the application process, interested agricultural producers may submit a program application at any time. You can visit the NRCS Get Started page for more information. NRCS provides a program appendix to all applicants, and that program appendix describes all of the program requirements. Applications received by the established cutoff date are considered for funding in the fund pool designated by the applicant during the current sign-up. Only those applicants who participate in the day-to-day -day management of an ag operation and share in the risks associated with agricultural production are eligible to apply for CSP. Your local NRCS office personnel can help you determine if you meet this requirement. And I assume everybody's going to get a copy of these slides, the links to, to the Get Started page and to the uh, office locator are both in the notes on those slides. Now, during the evaluation, ranking, and field verification process, which is the next step, NRCS will meet with applicants to review their application, their agricultural operation delineation, and complete a resource inventory of the ag operation based on an in-office interview with the applicant. So that's done in the office. The resource inventory allows NRCS to determine that the minimum program requirements are met and to identify new stewardship activities that the applicant wishes to implement during the contract period. NRCS ranks eligible applications using established tools and then makes funding decisions at the state level. Selected applicants will receive a free approval letter to notify them of their selection for funding. Eligible applicants that are not selected for funding in the current future sign-up In the current general sign-up will be considered in future sign-ups. 
Applicants who do receive a pre-approval letter are required to respond to NRCS and acknowledge their intent to continue with the application and contracting process. NRCS then conducts a field verification of all pre-approved applicants to verify the accuracy of the information that was provided during the resource inventory evaluation and application ranking process. Now, during this field verification, NRCS may request existing farm records to verify applied conservation activities and the suitability of planned stewardship activities. The resource inventory and ranking may be adjusted as a result of that completed field verification. And in some cases, these adjustments could impact the pre-approved status of an application if it is determined that the application no longer meets the minimum program requirements. The next step is the contract development process. And during that process, Conservation stewardship plans and conservation program pro contracts are developed. Conservation program contract activities will include the maintenance of existing conservation activities, as well as all planned future activities. NRCS approves and commits funds for the contract, then notifies the applicant of the contract approval. Applicants may not, ins the installation of planned activities cannot begin until the authorized NRCS approval signs the contract. So you can't start the activities before your contract is obligated. The next step is the implementation of the contract activities. And of course, that occurs after obligation. Participants complete activities as scheduled, maintain existing practices as documented in the conservation program contract and in the stewardship plan. NRCS will conduct annual reviews to determine if scheduled activities are implemented and existing activities are maintained according to the NRCS contract requirements. Now, during these reviews, NRCS may also request records to verify the implementation of those planned activities. And NRCS will certify contract items as complete and eligible to receive payment if they meet the criteria for implementation. And that criteria can be found on the enhancement job sheets that will be provided. Final step is the annual payment process. Payments will be made to participants if all contract provisions were followed and items were certified by NRCS. Certified contract items will be eligible for payment as soon as possible in the fiscal year after the scheduled activities have been completed. Participants will receive payments for certified items if the participant has maintained their eligibility and submits a signed application form. NRCS is actively pursuing avenues to increase participation of tribes and tribal members in all programs, including conservation stewardship program. To meet that goal, NRCS has implemented the following strategies. NRCS employs more than 190 tribal liaisons in states where we have federally recognized tribes in order to coordinate outreach activities for those tribes and individual tribal members. In addition, applicants must self-certify control of land on the CPA 1200 conservation program application. And applicants may include land that they do not own if they have a lease agreement that extends through the length of the contract. Applicants may request a waiver for this documentation requirement when long-term leases are not available on land administered by the Bureau of Indian Affairs or other tribal lands. 5% of the annual CSP allocation is reserved for applicants who apply in the socially disadvantaged farmer and rancher fund pools in each general sign-up. Now, the term socially disadvantaged can apply to an individual or an entity who is a member of a socially disadvantaged group. For an entity, at least 50% ownership in the farm or business must be held by socially disadvantaged individuals for that entity to be considered socially disadvantaged. Now, According to National Agricultural Statistics Service, the total number of farms in the U.S. decreased during the period from 2002 to 2012. However, the number of farms operated by tribal members have doubled during that same time frame. So 5% of the annual acreage allocation in CSP is reserved for applicants in what we call the beginning farmer and rancher fund pools during each general sign-up period. Beginning farmer and ranchers include those producers who have not farmed for 10 or more consecutive years 
and would include many of these new farmers who are tribal members. This slide shows the deadlines for the 2016 CSP sign-up, and it is March 31st, 2016. Applications for the 2016 general sign-up, which are received after March 31st, 2016, will be considered for funding in the next general sign-up. Participants with existing CSP contracts that expire on December 31st, 2016, and are in compliance with existing contract requirements and agree to meet or exceed two additional priority resource concerns may be eligible to apply for renewal. Applications for renewal in the 2017 renewal sign-up that are received after March 31st, 2016 will not be considered for renewal. So you have, to, you have to get your renewal application in before the March 31st deadline. NRCS is planning some changes that will improve the transparency of CSP and enhance the delivery of conservation performance. The conservation management tool, or CMT as we call it, will be replaced by a more transparent screening and ranking system similar to that that we currently use for EQIP. Transparency and payments will be enhanced by implementing a published regional cost list that clearly identifies the payment to be received for performance of planned activities. And enhancements will clearly be tied to existing practice standards and the requirement to address additional criteria for specific resource concerns. That's all I have to present today, and I'll, I guess I can take some questions or I can wait until the end, whatever you all prefer. You can unmute star six your phone line if you have a question, or you can type it into the chat button down on the corner here. Hi, this is Teresa Honga from the IEC Western Region. I had a question about this. Is there a size limit uh, for the CSP program as far as um, farmland or cropland? OK, Teresa, that's a good question. There, there is no size limit. Uh, applicants are required to enroll their entire operation. And if FSA, there's no minimum size. If FSA will assign you a farm number, you can apply for CSP. Uh, there is no maximum size. Like I said, you're required to enroll your entire operation. However, there is a contract limit of $200,000 over five years for individuals and uh, $400,000 for general partnerships and formal joint ventures. So your payments may be capped at $40,000 or $80,000 a year. Also, no individual participant can receive more than $40,000 in payments during a given year under the Conservation Stewardship Program. But there is no limit on the size. Thank you. Yeah. Danita, I'm going to hang around and, and sit in for the rest of this conference, so I'll be available to answer questions at the end if people think of something that they want to ask. OK, that sounds good. I'm just getting the, the next one set up. And Teresa, I will allow you to go ahead and get started, and you can um, Use the tabs down here on the corner to go through your slides. Good afternoon. I am Teresa. Okay. I'm Teresa Honda with IAC. I cover the Western region. Uh, the states I cover are Arizona and Utah. Today I've got with me Annette Bravo. 
I'm hearing an echo. I'm sorry. Um, if, if people could not be on both the phone and the computer at the same time, that's why there's the echo. Phone and what? What was that, Dan? If, uh, if people were on the phone, their audio connection. Okay, anyway, um, I've got Annette Bravo here from the Wallapai Tribe. She's the Assistant Director of the Wallapai Tribal Natural Resource Department. And so I'll go ahead and turn it over to her and she'll speak about uh, the CSP program and how um, it's done well here on the reservation. Okay. Hello. Um, I was in um, I was in the Wildlife Fisheries and Parks program when we became involved with the Conservation Stewardship Program. Um, so I'll, I'll just begin. So in case you didn't know where the Wallapai Reservation was, we're located in northwest Arizona. The reservation encompasses nearly 1 million contiguous acres, including 108 miles of the Colorado River. We have reservation trust land allotments and deeded land in Valentine, Arizona, Wikiup, Arizona, and Truckee, California. The tribe is divided into five livestock grazing associations. In total, there are 50 grazing permits to tribal members who are members of a livestock association. In 2000, the tribe created the Wallapai Soil and Water Conservation District, whose purpose was to promote direct communication, collaboration, cooperation, and funding tie with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. In 2001, the tribe signed an MOU with the University of Arizona to promote and deliver agriculture programs to the Wallapai community. The MOU also established a cooperative extension office on the reservation housed within the Natural Resources Department. In 2003, the, the tribe signed an MOU with the Department of Agriculture to strengthen our government-to-government -government relationship with the Department of Agriculture and NRCS. How do you go to the next slide? Next slide, please. In 2009, the Conservation Stewardship Program was promoted to our tribe by Alan McBee, the NRCS District Conservationist in Kingman. He held several meetings with tribal producers to educate them on the benefits of the program, and people from the state office also came up as well. By the end of 2009, the tribe and all the livestock associations signed up for CSP. With the office interview, completion of resource inventory, and identification of enhancement projects, the application process took about two hours to complete for each application. Um, and we completed five applications at that time. The field verification was conducted by the district conservationist and state office personnel. Um, next slide. Although Alan, our district conservationist, did his best to explain the program, the tribal producers were still, was still skeptical that they would be receiving funding for doing what they have been doing as ranchers. We completed our first year of the program in 2010. In addition to the regular practices that were conducted, the enhancement practices that they selected in the interview process were also completed. Photos, GPS locations, data, and reports were submitted to our DC and Kingman by the end of the year. In early 2011, the tribe and the approved livestock associations received their first CSP payments. Everyone was shocked and couldn't believe that they received funding for doing their normal practices as a rancher. As a result of being skeptical and everyone believed that there was a catch, nobody spent, excuse me? As a result of being skeptical and everyone believing that there was a catch 
to the money, nobody spent a dime of that money. The tribe and the livestock associations continue doing their practices. Early in 2012, the next payment, the, the next CSP payment was received. Now the people were asking questions. Our district conservationists again had to educate and convince our tribe and tribal associations that there were no strings attached to the money and they could use this money to continue doing what they were doing as well as address higher priority problems within each association. Okay, next slide. Some of the enhancement projects that the association selected were installing wildlife ramps, wildlife jumps, um, resting and rotating their cattle using salt and mineral blocks, recycling their oil, and conducting trend monitoring projects. Okay, next slide. Um, some of the implement, implementation projects that the associations use or how they spent their CSP monies. Uh, some, some of the associations, they conducted brush removal. The associations used a contractor to remove juniper and other woody debris to stimulate native grass growth. Depending on the project location, the contractor's costs have been as high as $247 an acre. The associations worked with NRCS to re receive WIP funding or EQIP funding to cover a portion of the project cost and they have paid the balance of the project using the Conservation Stewardship Program funding. So to date there's been almost 5,000 acres of brush removal that has been completed on the reservation. Okay, next slide. Um, some, one of the associations, they used their CSP money to purchase stock trailer to help for moving cattle. And another association purchased their own grinding machine and completed their own juniper removal project. And the other associations, they have rented this machine um, from the association that purchased the grinder. Okay, next slide. One of our one of our associations purchased a cattle working system which helps them in sorting, branding, and providing medication and vaccinations. Next slide. All the associations, they use their CSP funding for all their rangeland improvements. After being convinced that they can spend their money, the associations have repaired or replaced roughly 55 miles of fast pasture fencing in addition to 60 miles of reservation boundary fencing. There has also been four water storage tanks constructed totaling 88,000 gallons for livestock and wildlife. The water tanks are used as a tool to aid in the distribution of livestock to facilitate a planned grazing system. Many more repair and replacement projects are prioritized for the future and four 100,000 gallon water storage tanks are currently under construction and should be online this fall. Okay, next slide. Because the tribe has committed to delivering and promoting agriculture, 4-H, youth education, and community development by establishing a U of A cooperative extension office and creating a Wallapai Nation soil and water conservation district, the tribe is currently constructing a facility to house all these things. Through our 4-H youth and agriculture facility, we hope to have better
more construction. Temporary round. 